The AEC industry in the United States has risen significantly in recent years. Not every project goes smoothly, and others are completely way behind schedule or over budget. Here's a list of 10 buildings that have blown the budget. You could be excused for assuming that China's government is out to destroy the environment. It doesn't mind demolishing mountains to develop cities or completely diverting rivers, ruining their banks in an attempt to leverage its ability to offer power to households and businesses. The Three Gorges Dam, located just on the Yangtze River in Hubei Province, central China, will be no exception. It has a flood control dam, a massive lock for transporting ships up and down the river, plus 26 hydroelectric power plants. It was approved in 1992 with an estimated cost of $8.35 billion. The budget rains, however, quickly slipped through someone's fingers and the final cost doubled to $37 billion. The necessity to relocate the 1.3 million population whose towns and cities were drowned by the river's rerouting accounted for a portion of the expense. To complicate things worse, the stranded reservoir is clogged with algae and trash, and its banks are vulnerable to landslides. North Korea isn't the most apparent location for a luxury tourist resort, but then-dictator Kim Il-sung decided to create one in 1987. South Korea, which is hosting the Olympic Games the subsequent year, attempted to steal the show by starting construction on the 105-story Rongyong Hotel. The hotel's architecture, a three-wing triangular tower of gleaming glass and futuristic concrete, appeared to be aimed at deflecting attention away from North Korea's neighbor and worst foe. When the Soviet system fell apart in the early 90s, however, the building of the hotel came to a halt. The $750 million building is still unfinished. An internal evaluation found more than just a shell of concrete floors and a tangle of wires in 2012 when a German hotel group indicated an interest in operating the property. The vacant space-age shell, which is the world's highest unoccupied skyscraper, gives Pyongyang, North Korea's capital, a distinctive symbol that should also serve as a warning of what can occur when antagonism trumps common sense. The sea is swallowing the most magnificent Italian city. For ages, flooding has been an issue, and indeed, the Mose Initiative was created to help keep the waves at bay. The project was announced in 1988 by Italian Deputy Prime Minister Gianni De Michelis and a deadline of 1995 was set. The Mose project's designs indicated an immensely ambitious operation involving the installation of 78 movable metal gates, each weighing up to 300 tons and reaching a height of 66 feet in Venice Lagoon canals. Mose's project value has grown from $1.7 billion to $8.1 billion as the project's completion date has been pushed back to 2018 and suspicions of corruption have dogged it. It's pointless to fiddle while Rome burns. While Venice sinks, this is tinkering. The Canadian government has announced that a massive new airport will be built in Montreal. The government claimed 100,000 acres of privately owned land to make room for the project. Almost 2,000 people were evicted from their houses in a process that cost $140 million, nearly eight times the initial estimate. The airport opened, but it was severely hampered by a lack of roads and railway connections, which posed a considerable challenge considering its placement 31 miles beyond the city it was supposed to service. It was simply too complicated and expensive for passengers to get there. In 1883, he began construction on the spectacular church he had envisioned in downtown Barcelona. He envisioned it with towers topped with fruit sculptures and a center nave that resembled a forest with a capacity of 14,000 worshippers. 
The project was just 15% complete when Gaudi was hit and murdered by a vehicle in 1926. To add insult to injury, the Spanish Civil War caused further delays, with Schelling destroying the chamber holding his ideas and designs. Work on the project resumed in 1952, although it is still unfinished to this day. On Earth, the construction sector is difficult enough. When your feet are firmly planted on the ground, scheduling, budgeting, and estimating are difficult enough. Consider how much more difficult all of these can be when your work is literally in space. The International Space Station, ISS, project, a cooperative effort comprising Russia, Europe, Japan, Canada, and the United States, was so complex and difficult when it began in 1998 that it's already four years behind schedule. Furthermore, the project's planned budget of $17.4 billion ballooned to $160 billion, with the U.S. contributing $100 billion of such an amount. On top of that, the ISS's running expenditures would be out of this world, only with the United States contributing $3 billion per year. Even if it has a long life, the International Space Station can persist as the most expensive building ever built. The Dome, which was built as we entered the 21st century as a location for the city's celebrations, was controversial from the start. Throughout the design and construction phases, expenses continued to rise, forcing the UK government to open its coffers and distribute more public monies. It ultimately cost £789 million to construct. The financial crisis was exasperated by ticket sales that fell far short of expectations. Happily, the Dome was called the O2 Arena in 2007 and upgraded to a 20,000-seat concert venue for an additional £600 million. The O2 Arena is now a very valuable and successful venue which is presumably some solace to the team that brought what was essentially a millennium white elephant into existence. The Tunnel is a series of 31-mile-long tunnels that connect England and France beneath the English Channel. The tunnel, which was completed in 1994 for $21 billion, was 80% more expensive than expected. The channel was funded privately via borrowed funds and the sale of shares, making it one of the most intensive and costly projects in history. Due to its cost overruns, the investment makers lost the majority of its money. They voted in 2004 to remove the Eurotunnel board from the control of the channel. By 2009, stockholders had received a dividend as a result of restructuring. In the early 1990s, traffic in Boston's downtown area was a nightmare. The Big Dig was built in an attempt to alleviate traffic congestion. The complex project entailed upgrading the six-lane highway with just an eight to the 10-lane underground road. The Big Dig, the most extravagant building project in US record, included the construction of many other important bridges, highways, and tunnels, one of which ran beneath Boston Harbor. The project was supposed to be finished in 1998, but it took nearly 10 years to finish in 2007. Originally estimated to cost $2.6 billion, the final cost was $14.8 billion. Mudslides, malaria, and outright suffering were among the pleasantries enjoyed by the early 1990s U.S. team building the Panama Canal. Despite facing extraordinary problems and overcoming terrible obstacles, the crew was able to execute one of the world's most prestigious building projects. A decade later, a major improvement was planned to allow the canal to accommodate larger ships and trouble cargo traffic between the Western and Eastern Hemispheres. 
Tensions arose as quickly as work began, and in early 2014, a disagreement over funding caused work to be halted for two weeks. A debate erupted about who was to blame and responsible for a $1.16 billion budget shortfall. Only after much deliberation did the two parties have to agree on an interim funding solution that would allow work to resume. That's all for today's video and thanks for watching it. If you liked it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And before you leave, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, and turn on notifications to never miss any updates. I will see you in the next video. Take care and stay tuned.